Okay, good evening. Today we are going to continue learn the force and uh, impulse of force. Okay, and uh, the question I gave you the page eight, page eight, and uh, question two B, question two B. Okay, I read a question for you. I give homework for you. Question two, uh, figure two point three shows an object of mass eight kg being pulled. By a force of F is 20 newton along a rough surface. The direction of the force and uh, 40 degrees to horizontal. The frictional force acting on the object is 4 newton. And the force is the object, is the, the mass of the object is 8 kg. 8 kg, and there's a force, there's a force pulling towards uh, the force at equals to 20 newton in an angle 40 degrees. In an angle 40 degrees. Okay, and the frictional force, there's a frictional force. Friction of force is 4 newton. The friction of force is 4 newton. This is equation. Okay, uh, calculate the vertical component of the force. As I told you last week, I taught you last week, we have to do the vertical component and the horizontal component. Okay, vertical component and the horizontal component, you must take, make a triangle. Make a triangle. Make, make a triangle. Make a triangle. Uh, this one is uh, we, we call it, uh, the force F. Huh? The force F, uh, we call it uh, applied force. The applied force pulling upwards. So from the applied force, there's another one of the component. One of the component is uh, a branch out. So the branch out the component is Fx, Fx, and Fy, Fy. Fx means horizontal component. Fy means vertical component. Fy is vertical component, Fx is horizontal component. Okay, I told you last week very clearly about this. Okay, how to get the direction Fx and Fy. Okay, we are uh, uh, we pulling the force, the applied force. F is pull pull upwards. So the Fx, the another the the branch, one of the branch must come out. So from the force F, one of the branch must come out. Okay. So the force F and the branch must come out, and F Y is continuing. Oh, uh, if you if you get this force like this, F is like this, okay, and this one F Y and F X. Or always horizontal force F X and F Y. But this force is coming down. This force F is coming down. So it's coming down. There's another branch is coming down. So coming up. So the branch F Y and F X continue. So Fx and Fy is must continue each other. Fx continue Fy, Fy continue Fx. So this is a force direction slide. Okay. So you must you must know the direction because direction is very important. Okay. And uh, uh, Fy as a as a result Fy so opposite or hypotenuse. So uh, question one they want a vertical component. Question 1 is vertical component. So, uh, sine 40 equals to sine 40 equals to uh, Fy over F. Fy over F. So, F sine 40 equals to Fy. This is uh, opposite to hypotenuse. Opposite to hypotenuse. Must use the trigonometry. So it's F. F is 20 newton sine 40 equals to Fy. Fy. Okay. And uh, I must get this uh, this angle for you. Okay. 
So, uh, twenty times twenty times sine forty. Okay, sine forty uh, zero point six four two zero. So F Y. So F Y equals to twenty sine forty twelve point nine. Twelve point nine F Y. Twelve point eight six are the force, but twelve point eight nine newton. So this is vertical component twelve point nine newton. And uh, horizontal component, horizontal component, cos. Say cos horizontal, horizontal component adjacent, adjacent to equator. So cos forty. Cos forty is f x over f. So f cos forty equals to f x. Okay, and f equals to twenty newton. Okay, the given twenty newton. The cos forty equals to zero point seven seven six zero f x. So all together f x equals to fifteen point three newton. Fifteen point three newton. So this is a vertical component. This is a horizontal component. Okay. This so one is a, we are using a trigonometric method, right? The sine and we use cos. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite f y over f. F is hypotenuse, right? And uh, horizontal. We find the horizontal component. Cos forty. Cos forty equals f x over f. So f x. And uh, you can find this answer. So that is uh, that is we call it uh, uh, we call it uh, horizontal component and uh, vertical component. So let me write this this answer. Uh, horizontal component is is fifteen point three two two newton. F Y is twelve point nine twelve point nine newton. So okay now. Now the third third question, third question, they are asking you, what is the normal reaction R on the force? Normal reaction R. So normal reaction R. There is a normal reaction R here. Okay. Normally, normal reaction force, normal reaction force R, R equals to W. R equals to W. Because normal reaction force R equals to W. Because uh, R is a normal reaction force upwards, and the weight is downwards. The weight downwards. The weight downwards. So the making ninety degrees, sir. Huh? So this is a R and W. R and W is equal. R equals to W. So normal reaction force R equals to W. If There is no other force acting on the object. Okay, for example, uh, okay, this this uh, object, this is R, this is R, and there's a weight. There's no other force, no other force acting on the upon the upon the upon the, uh, upon the object. So this R and the uh, W is equal. But in this case, there's a one force, extra force acting upon it, uh, upon the object, extra force. So in this case, how to find it? How to find? So we have to find by using this this method number three. Number three method. Uh, total vertical force upwards equals to total vertical force downwards. Total vertical force upwards equals to total vertical force downwards. So vertical force. What is a vertical force? Okay, this is vertical force upwards. Upwards. Total vertical force upwards equals total vertical vertical force downwards. Vertical. Vertical means it's a ninety degrees upwards, right? Or ninety degrees downwards. Okay. So total vertical force upwards. So what are the total uh, vertical force upwards? Upwards. So there are two forces. Okay, one is R, and another one is F Y. That's why F Y and F X very important to know the direction. So total vertical force. So R 
plus at y r plus at y the two vertical force upwards equals to one only one vertical force downwards vertical force downwards vertical force downwards that is called w so r plus at y equals 12.9 and w equals to w equals to mg la okay uh, mg the mass is 8 kg and the g is uh, r plus 12.9 8 times 10 equals to r plus 12.9 equals 80 newton so r equals to 80 minus uh, 12.9 r equals to 80 minus 12.9 so that is r equals to that is called r equals to um, 67.1 67.1 67.1 so this is called this is called the what you call normal reaction force huh? normal reaction force okay i will tell you again r and w r and w is equal r equals to w is equal when there's no other force extra force acting upon the object okay only uh, when only weight only weight Weight is equals to R. Weight equals to R. The R, R and the weight is equals. If there's no extra force, but in this case, there's extra force acting upon the object. So uh, we have to do this method. We have to do this question, this method. Uh, if you want to find the R or normal reaction force, total vertical force upwards equals total vertical force downwards. So R plus F Y equals to W. R plus twelve point nine. That y is 12.9, that's why we found it. Mg is mg is mass 8 kg, 8 and 10. La. So is R equals to 67.1 Newton. That is called uh, we call it a normal reaction force. Okay. You understand? Now we are going to learn uh, next questions. Next question is about um, asking what is the resultant force on the object? Resultant force on object. Okay, to find the resultant force, if any extra object, any force, any extra force acting upon object, that to find the resultant force, you ask you have to ask one question. Uh, as a matter of fact, two questions. Okay, uh, what is the direction to find the resultant force? Huh? What is the direction uh, of the movement of object? What is the direction of the movement of the object? When the, uh, when the force acts on the object. Okay, I, I repeat again. What is the direction? What is the direction? Okay, the object going to move when the force applied to it. Okay, when the force applied to the object, for example, 20 Newton applied, applied force. R and W is existing, naturally existing force. Naturally existing force. So F is only applied force. So F when apply F20 Newton, where is object going to move? The first question. Okay. So uh, we have to we have to learn this one. This object is going to uh, we're going to learn the, because this object is going to move. It's pull this way. It's pull this way. You pull this way, you pull this way, you pull towards uh, 40 degrees angle, uh, 40 angle, uh, 40 degrees. Uh, so this object will move horizontally. Okay, you can try. You can try this object. You can put it on uh, on the floor, and you can pull with the uh, 40 degrees, with the 40 degrees pull. So the object will move horizontally. So the direction, you know, the direction the object will move horizontally. The first question answered. Horizontally. Okay. Next question. What are the forces acting horizontally? What are the forces acting horizontally upon the object? Okay, first question to what direction the object will move when the force 20 Newton applied to the object? We found it the direction is horizontal. Horizontal. The second question what are the forces acting horizontally? So, the question number three, resultant force, 
resultant force okay we have to find horizontal force horizontal force affects only affects only affects it's not f f is not uh, really uh, what do you call it um, effective in this in this case affects is effect affects is causing the object to move horizontally affects so affects the resultant force affects horizontally the object move horizontally affects but there's a one force friction is there friction is acting horizontally the friction friction uh, horizontally horizontal force is e kind of left and right so horizontal affects is always minus if there sorry uh, sorry F, friction is always minus the, if there is no friction the resultant force affects only but since there is a friction to minus friction so fx equals to 15.3 and the friction equals to 4 newton and uh, 11.3 newton that is called resultant force resultant force F equals to 11.3 newton F equals to 11.3 newton okay question number 4 question number 4 part 4 they are asking uh, Question 5, what is the acceleration? To find acceleration is simple, F equals to M. F must be resultant force, F must be resultant force, 11.3 equals to M, M equals to 8 kg at A. So A equals to 11.3 divided by 8, uh, uh, 1.41, 1.41 meter per second square. So 1.41 meter per second square, that is called acceleration, that is acceleration. Okay, so we found the resultant force. So to find the resultant force, you always remember this for two questions. What direction the object would move upon when the force applied to the object? What direction, when the force applied to the object, what direction the object would move? In this case, the object will move horizontally. Second question, what are the forces acting horizontally? What are the forces acting horizontally? Okay, what are the forces acting horizontally? So, fx and minus friction. If there is no friction, fx only. Resultant force is not fx. So, this friction is there. So, 15.3 is 11.3 and uh, Newton and uh, uh, resultant force, f, resultant force. It's not resultant force, uh, f equals resultant force. Resultant force equals ma and 11.3 is 8a. The mass is 8a. So, 8. Uh, mass is 8 kg and A. So A is 1.41 meter per second square. So this is what we learn. Okay, going to we are going to learn today. Uh, we are going to learn today impulsive force. Is it all? We learn impulsive uh, force uh, when we learn uh, momentum. But this impulsive force is under safety features of the car or safety features of the vehicle. Okay, the impulsive force, the impulsive force. So the impulsive force is very, very important. Okay, very, very, very important. Okay, very, very important because the impulsive force. Uh, uh, some quick, uh, quite some question, uh, some question can be asked in the impulsive force. Okay, the impulsive force F equals to m v minus m u over t. So the F equals to impulsive force. Impulsive force T equals to impact time. Impact time or collision time. Impact time or collision time. The F equals impulsive force and uh, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, T is uh, we call it uh, T call we call a collision time or impact time. Okay. Another thing, very very important thing, is impulsive force. Impulsive force is produced. Is produced 
when during collision during collision for some kind of impact some kind of, some impact 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 kesan uh, pelanggaran ataupun kesan uh, 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 pertembungan okay some kind of impact so it's produced during collision or impact lah so impulsive force produced during collision or impact for example uh, vehicle collision okay uh, for example eg uh, vehicle vehicle collision okay not only the collision accidents can cause impulsive force not necessary Okay, uh, definitely there's a in a collision or we call it uh, the impact uh, we call it collision of the car or collision or accident during accident there's impulsive force is produced there's no doubt about it but beside the collision beside pelanggaran beside the accidents there's some other impact can cause the impulsive force so for example kicking a ball kicking a ball kicking a ball Kicking ball, kicking a ball. Uh, for example, uh, we call it uh, hockey, uh, cricket, uh, hockey, cricket, uh, badminton. So this is what we call kicking a ball. You kick the ball. So you kick the ball, you kick the ball. We got it. The the ball got impact with the uh, with the leg. So there's impulsive force produced. Okay. Badminton racket. So badminton racket with shuttlecock. So the badminton racket and the shuttlecock could impact or collision. So there's impulsive force. Cricket, cricket baton, cricket baton with the ball lah. So cricket baton with the ball, there's impact. There's impulsive force produced there. Okay. And uh, hockey, hockey, hockey stick or uh, hockey, uh, hockey stick. Uh, we kick the what do you call it? The uh, hockey stick with the ball. Hockey stick with the ball. The uh, hockey stick and the ball collide. Hockey stick and the ball collide. So there's impulsive force. So impulsive force produced. Uh, for example, golf. Golf. We can be we we uh, we put golf. Golf. Eh? Golf stick. Uh, we say it. Say golf. So we call it the ball hit with the golf stick. So there is call it uh, impulsive force produced. So impulsive force produced. There is sub when there when there's a collision vehicles when there's a collision on the vehicles okay car collision or lorry collision or bicycle collision or motorbike collision any collisions there's impulsive force certainly is produced impulsive force produced during collision okay beside this there's some uh, uh, any kind of impact any kind of impact for example. Uh, uh, we call it a uh, bad with the racket with the shuttlecock the impact collide collision uh, kicking a ball kicking a ball the leg and the ball so collide so there's a call impulsive force so impact so the impact also can cause the impulsive force okay now today we're going to learn safety features of the car safety features in the car safety features in the car safety uh, features 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 in the car or in the car in the vehicle lah. safety features in the car or vehicle okay okay during in collision impulsive force is produced during collision Impulsive force is produced. Okay, during collision, the impulsive force is produced, and um, to reduce the impact of the collision, to reduce impact of the collision. Reduce the impact. The, the, the reduce impact of the collision. To reduce the impact of the collision, 
for example such as damages damages injuries okay damages injuries eh? impassive force should be reduced impassive force should be reduced should be reduced impulsive force should be reduced okay i repeat again you uh, i repeat again to you in safety features of the car during collision during collision impulsive force is produced impulsive force is produced to reduce the impact of the collision to reduce the impact of the collision impact of the collision impact of the collision means damages the injuries or death can occur also okay to to reduce the impact of the collision kesan pelanggaran kesan pelanggaran impact of the collision for example the damages the injuries to reduce the impact of the collision you must reduce impulsive force impulsive force should be reduced so to reduce the impact of the collision such as the damages injuries impulsive force should be reduced okay how to reduce impulsive force okay, now the question how to reduce impulsive force very important question how to reduce impulsive force okay i repeat again during collision there is impulsive force is produced okay impulsive force is a cause of the impact of the collision impulsive force is a cause of the impact of the collision or in other word the impulsive force causing damages injuries impulsive force causing damages injuries so we have to reduce impulsive force in order to reduce the impact of the collision we have to reduce impulsive force we have to reduce impulsive force in order to reduce the damages and injuries we have to reduce impulsive force in order to reduce 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 uh, limit or reduce mengurangkan uh, reduce the impact of the collision that is damages and injuries okay how to reduce impulsive force how to reduce impulsive force okay f equals to mv minus mu over t mv minus mu over t so uh, time is constrained because time is constrained i go straight one important point okay impulsive force for example uh, uh, directly uh, uh, i will tell something for this impulsive force directly with the mass impulsive force directly with the velocity impulsive force directly directly proportional with the mass directly proportional with the mass and directly proportional with the velocity so reduce mass reduce impulsive force reduce mass reduce impulsive force reduce velocity reduce impulsive force but this is both is not our control under our control reduce mass reduce velocity is not our control for example for example you go with a bicycle or motorbike you small man but you go no, sorry um, i don't say okay uh, you go to kanchen uh, the the car or the vehicle coming against or opposite direction is a lorry so big mass small kanchen big mass small kanchen big mass big mass the lorry is big mass and the small kanchen small man so but the impact of the impulsive force when they collide the lorry collide with the kanchil the impulsive force is the same we saw this earlier we saw this impulsive force when two vehicles collide according to momentum uh, principle of conservation momentum we learn the impact the impulse and the impulsive force the same so the kanchil and the lorry will receive the same impulsive force same amount of impulsive force but who will get the more damage the kanchil of course because smaller The lorry is a big mass, big mass and heavy, solid and solid, made of solid, uh, solid iron. So the impact is a bit lesser. But 
same impossible. So, it is not our control, the mass is not our control, the velocity also not our control. So, we may go with uh, 80, uh, uh, 20 km per hour, but the car which come against us, we come with 100 km per hour. So, uh, the impulsive force is same. So, this is velocity, the velocity also not our control. So, velocity and mass is not our control. So, only one control, one is control, one, one is under our control. The impulsive force is inversely proportional with the time. Impulsive force and the time, impact time or the collision time inversely proportional. So, to increase the impact time, increase the impact time, we reduce the collision. We reduce it, the impulsive force. Okay, so increase the impact or collision time increase the impact or collision time to reduce impulsive force. Increase the impact of collision time. Increase the impact of collision time to reduce the impulsive force. What is the benefit of reducing impulsive force? Reducing impact of the collision or damages, injuries can be reduced. So, so uh, I will I'll tell you again by sequence. Huh? Increase the increase increase in the impact time is in our control. Impact time in our control. Impact time. So, increase the impact time or collision time, reduce impulsive force. Reducing impulsive force to reduce the impact of the collision, that means the damages, injuries can be reduced. So, how to increase the impact time or collision time? That's why we call it, we are going to learn. Uh, I don't know I got time or not, but uh, uh, the car, for example, How to increase the impact time? The impre increase the impact time. Increase increase impact time. Right. So to increase the impact time, uh, we have to use car bumper. We use uh, we call it uh, car bumper. Car bumper. Seat belt, seat belt, uh, call it the uh, uh, we call airbag, airbag and a comfort zone. Uh, these are things, some of things to increase the impact time. Car bumper, we have to use the car bumper, seat belt, seat belt and airbag and comfort zone and some uh, some ABS system all this system all this system ABS system ABS system uh, and pill of brakes braking system so the ABS system all this system in the car is meant is meant to increase the impact time during collision because we cannot uh, we cannot set the time for impulse uh, uh, for set for set time for uh, Pollution. We don't know. Pollution may happen anytime. Or pelanggar, or accident can happen anytime. But during collision, during accident, in case accident happen, so you must increase the time of impact, time of impact to reduce impulsive force. So to increase the time of impact, so they use car bumper, seat belt, airbag, crumpled zone, ABS system. So these are the safety features in the car. Okay, I'll. Uh, uh, tell you but uh, car bumper only la. car bumper only but car bumper or seat belt airbag seat belt also seat belt okay um, seat belt you put seat belt you put seat belt and during collision during collision the seat belt will prevent you prevent from moving forward to dash against the dashboard so the seat belt pull it back the seat belt pull it back pull it back so is increase the time, increase the time, 
increase the time. So you pull back, sit back, pull back you, pulling back you is an increase the time. So increase the time. So impulsive force reduced. So for example, a car bumper also same same like car bumper. Car bumper also. Uh, okay, I will I will give you car bumper. This one car bumper. It is a. Um, The scar bumper, you can see uh, um, the, the sedan car, the saloon car, the car bump bumper, the bumper is behind behind the car, under the number plate, uh, behind the car, there's a bumper, the curve, curve. Uh. In the bumper, there's a two rod, uh, two rod attached to the body of the car. Two rod, the bumper is bumper like this. It's bumper like this, the two rods. The two rod cannot be, uh, cannot be visible, the two rods. Two rods, okay, okay, two rods, okay, this is a car bumper, two rods, okay, two rods, the two rods and the bumper, uh, the rod may be, not be longer, la, shorter, la, the bumper, see, the bumper cover the rods, the two rods attached to the car, uh, car body, the body of the car, okay, body of the car, okay, that uh, two rods, what happened, if there is a force, uh, there is some, some collision, another car is big, uh, bang, bang from behind, uh, collide from behind. So the, uh, the time, the, the time, for example, uh, 0 0.1 second, the impact is uh, uh, unfurled. The impact unfurled to the body of the car, zero, within 0 0.1 second. In 0 0.1 second, when the, another car collide, another car collide with the, from behind, so the impact is transferred in 0 0.1 second to the car. 